So the first time I shadowed a doctor in medical school, I decided to go after the program director of the residency program that I wanted to get into. And it was a very competitive program and not the best idea. So shadowing doctors is a great way to figure out sort of if you're at the pre-med level, if you even want to be a doctor or more importantly, once you're in medical school, kind of deciding what specialty you want to do. It's a great way to figure out what the day in the life actually looks like and talking to these people, getting advice from them. It's just a really good thing to do because no matter how much you read about a specialty or you see it on like social media or TV or whatever, you really don't know what it's like until you're in the trenches and you're ready to roll. So it's a great opportunity regardless of whatever level you're at and I highly recommend that you do at least a couple of shadowing experiences just to figure out, first of all, like I said, if you're an undergrad, whether you want to be a doctor or not, these can be a little bit tougher to set up, but more importantly, if you're already in medical school, again, just see what you're interested in, lay out a couple specialties, and see what a day looks like in each. Now, obviously, it's important to keep in mind that that day you're shadowing isn't necessarily representative of every day of a day in the life of that physician. Days are different, responsibilities are different, things go well, sometimes there's complications, so those things have to be taken into account as well. It's also a great way to form connections and relationships and network and kind of find opportunities through that network when the time comes. If you're in undergrad and you've been shadowing a doctor for a while or you shadowed them early on, later when it comes time for reference letters, it might be useful to do that. Or if you're in medical school, research opportunities, getting to know the residents, getting to know the program. Again, it's just a great way of getting all that stuff. So in order to do this, you're gonna have to figure out who actually takes on shadowers. And if you're already in medical school, the school oftentimes has a list of people that takes them on because if you're at an academic center, the hospital already knows there's gonna be students around and it's not that surprising or out of the ordinary for them. And generally, as part of your tuition, you're also paying for like insurance from the school to cover you while you're in the hospital. So again, it just makes it a lot easier. And it's exactly why it's a little bit more difficult when you're pre-med because you don't have that same insurance covering you and the doctor kind of has to be more careful with you while you're there. So if you are a pre-med, unless you know a doctor or family, friends that are doctors, it might be a little bit more difficult. In your case, your best bet's just gonna be Google. You just search up doctor of whatever specialty you're interested in and then your city's name and just see who comes up. Start making those phone calls, start sending those emails and see what you can find. And in terms of medical students, it's not much different for you. You're gonna have to email that doctor's office, talk to their secretary, and kind of set things up that way. Now, if you do happen to know some family friends or somebody in your family is a physician, use that nepotism, get in there. But if you don't, make those cold calls, make those cold emails, and just focus in on physicians that work at academic centers, because like I said, they're the most used to having students around, so it really shouldn't be a problem for them. And don't be offended if people say no, you gotta keep in mind these are busy people with stressful jobs and obviously other responsibilities other than work. So it's nothing personal most of the time. Usually it's just bad timing. So after you've found who you kind of want to shadow with, you're gonna to have to communicate with them and this is usually done by email. So send them an email from a professional email account from your student account. I like to just put in the subject heading like medical student interested in orthopedics or vascular or whatever specialty that you want to do a shadowing experience in. It's clear, it's to the point, they kind of know what the email is going to be about. And this whole process, you just want to make it as easy on them as possible. Take all the stuff off their plate that you can and just leave them with a simple yes or no answer. Now you want to email them quite a bit ahead of time, two weeks, a month, really just depends on the specialty and give them a few different dates and times that you're available so that they can kind of just choose what the best time is for them. And again, don't be too wordy with the email, just get straight to the point. Hey, Dr. Whoever and Co, or the secretary's name, whatever it is, my name is this, I'm a student here, I'm interested in this specialty. I was hoping to do a shadowing experience with you. 
please let me know if this is possible. Below are some dates and times that I'm available. That's it. You don't need to get fancy with it. You don't need to waste your time with a whole poem about their specialty. Just get to the point, get it done. And like I said, give them multiple days, multiple weeks, and multiple times. So it kind of makes it hard for them to say no because they're seeing, okay, this person's very interested and they're making it easy on us because you got to keep in mind their priority is obviously their patients doing their job and you're kind of just going to be getting in the way so you got to make it easy on them now like i said earlier if they say no it's no big deal sometimes it helps to follow up again in a few months if not just find somebody else there's plenty of doctors around i'm sure you can find someone now when they do get back to you and it's all set up there are just some things you can do to prepare in a sense so that when you show up you kind of know your way around and you're not that much of a liability to them while you're there. So the day before, like you don't need to know everything about the specialty, obviously that's what residency is for, but it helps to kind of just know what's going on. It shows your interest and even for your interest, if you are genuinely interested in the specialty, you're gonna be a lot more engaged if you have an idea of what they actually do. So if it's a surgical specialty, call their office or call the OR and ask them what the operations are for the next day and kind of just look up in general the anatomy that's relevant to that operation and kind of what they'll be doing. Like I said, you're gonna be a lot more engaged and if they happen to ask you something even as a joke, you'll know what you're talking about at least somewhat and that might impress them, you never know. Like I said earlier, the easier you make this on them, the better it's gonna be. So the day before or well in advance, if you're at an academic center, talk to the residents, ask them where to meet, where to get scrubs. So on the day of, you're not really getting in their way or slowing them down. Now the day of, I don't mean to put too much pressure on you, but just pretend it's kind of like an interview, right? You don't know who that person is going to be or how much say they have or who they know. So this goes with everybody, but especially them, you know, treat them with respect. They let you be part of their day. Like I said earlier, you're literally getting in their way at your level of training. You can't really help them a whole lot. So be grateful, be thankful, be respectful to everybody, the secretary everyone that's there, the patients obviously, and the physician that you're working with. So dress well, present yourself well, first impressions are everything, so you don't want to show up there looking like a mess and it just looks totally unprofessional. Be on time, preferably earlier, like I said, introduce yourself to everybody, not just the physician, and be very nice. Remember to enjoy yourself, it's your day, experience it, see what that specialty is like, when it's appropriate and there's some time, ask some questions, get to know the people, just have fun with it, but be professional and try your best to stay out of the way. Which brings me to the next point, be engaged, but stay out of the way. So try and be a fly on the wall. And like I said, when it's appropriate, for example, if it's a surgery and they're closing skin, the tough part of the operation's over, by all means, go ahead, ask some questions. They're for the most part really nice about it and they're happy to answer these questions. Or if you're in between patients or it's lunchtime or whatever, you kind of just get a feel for these things. And I don't mean to make it sound like a big deal and blow things out of proportion, but I've seen some really bad timing for asking questions. The patient's bleeding or it's a very tense situation in the operation. That's, that's not the time to ask about lifestyle. If they ask you to do something, it's great to help out and whatever, but don't do a whole lot on your own without being asked because most likely you're just gonna step on some toes and probably just get in the way, especially if it's in the OR. You don't wanna touch anything, don't move, don't breathe, unless you're being told to. The last thing you wanna do is get in the way and do something nobody told you to do and just make yourself look bad and that can leave a lasting first impression. So like I said, just have fun with it, do what you're told, just follow instructions and read the situation. Now it's really not that big of a deal, doctors have shadowers all the time and for the most part they love to have learners with them, they kind of get to show off their specialty, be an expert, show off their knowledge and answer any questions you have. But I do think this warrants a video and kind of talking to you guys about how to navigate it because it can have some bad consequences if like I said you do something that you weren't asked to do or you try too hard to be impressive and it kind of leaves them with a sour taste and not really a great first impression. So like I was saying earlier, the very first observership that I ever did in medical school was with the program director of the program. It was a surgical program and I don't even know how to scrub. We haven't even done the block of that 
particular system's anatomy, so like I'm going in blind and I choose to do it with the program director. Now luckily for me, he was a really nice guy and things worked out. In fact, he stood there and taught me how to scrub for the first time. He let me stand next to him in the operation, kind of get me involved in retracting a little bit. There was a resident and a fellow. It ended up being a fun day, but if I could do it over again, the very, very first one, I probably wouldn't go with the program director or the big shot of the program. Just go in there, start at a lower level, and obviously you're gonna respect whoever you work with, but probably don't go for the chair or the program director on your very first shot. Just get in there, feel it out, get a lay of the land, and then as you get more and more comfortable in that environment, by all means, you can spend some time with the big boys and girls and get your name out there, but be very selective with who you do your observerships with. And the other thing with shadowing, overexposure is a thing. You don't want to constantly be like breathing down people's necks. I get it, some specialties are competitive and you need to really get your face out there, but there's limits to everything. Especially because if you're doing these before your third or fourth year of medical school, which is when you'll mostly be doing them, you don't really have the clinical skills yet, you don't know how the hospital works yet, so you don't want every time this person sees you that you're just kind of standing there, you're being a liability, not that that's your fault, that's just your level of training, but you don't want to leave that lasting image in their head. Do an observership, maybe two with the same person, and then kind of just leave them alone, and then the next time you see them, hopefully you're a tip-top clerk, and you're working with them, you know exactly how the system works because your observerships, and you fit right into the team and you're actually helpful. So that's pretty much it. Like I said, shadowing is great. It helps you kind of figure out what specialties you want to do. It helps you get to know people, get your face out there. Those are all good things. So have fun with it. Seek out those opportunities. But like I said, just don't overdo it. Don't be annoying with it. It's going to be fine. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.